Okay, day two, uh, working on my rail king. That guy. And this amazing scrapyard. This place is actually kind of cool. It's awesome watching them throw all that shit everywhere. But uh, as far as what I'm working on here, I have never worked on one of these machines. And, well, I've worked on shuttle wagon, because that's what we work on uh, specifically, our, uh, our company. But as far as a rail king, I have never seen a rail king. So what's happening is this is a four-speed transmission. When I go into four, uh, or forward, I have speeds two and four, but not one and three. But if I go in reverse, I have all four speeds. Uh, so there's not really any good information uh, for this machine. So I had to figure out what the transmission was. Luckily enough, the operator's manual on this thing does actually state that it's a John Deere uh, Funk, a DF-150. So that made my job slightly easier. I was able to go on uh, online and find a DF-150 manual. Um, I went online, looked up the DF-150 the DF transmission and uh, found the control valve setup because I kind of want to know is it coincidence that first and fourth doesn't work? Or is there maybe something that connects those two that makes them both not work at the same time? Ugh. Now I gotta be able to get myself some access here because I don't have 200 mile long electrical leads to get up to where I can play up in the operator's compartment and see what the control valve is doing all at the same time. So, yeah. Gave myself some access there. And, uh, I was uh, looking through how the DF-150 functions and ironically enough, on the control valve, um, there's a clutch one and two um, so that's uh, D uh, and E, and on clutch one, if I can get there, uh, the way it functions is uh, one and two are the forward clutches, and then when you get into the letters, that's the speed in which you're in. But if you look here, this is the DF with four speed, not the eight speed. I don't have an eight speed, but the, the DF series with four speeds. It just so happens first, or forward, first and third are controlled off of the number one. But now I got myself an ability to fish my meter leads up underneath this machine once I get down here. So there's my engine, there's my transmission, and tucked up inside here is my control valve. And so I gotta make sure I'm looking at the right stuff, make sure everything jives correctly. That way I can probe the proper leads and get them fished up top if I get it probed right. And up where I can operate it up there and see what I'm doing, uh, at least I'll be able to start figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And if I need to do, start doing some pressure checks or if it's actually an electrical issue. But I'm gonna get started hooking up my probes and I'll be back with you here in a minute. All right, so now we're getting ready to do some testing here. Got my panels opened up so I can see what I'm doing. I need to get a flashlight because even though it's daylight outside, you can't half see what you're doing. I'll get a flashlight here. These things are sweet. They're uh, 
30 bucks ish on Amazon. They change all the time. They last a couple hours, two hours or so. Those are dead. I need to charge them. Now oh, I'm a kingdom for a light. I think King Arthur said that, or maybe Elon Musk or something. One of those guys. <laughs> Four lights. Four dead. Come on. Honey, can I buy another flashlight? I didn't know that they made chargers. No, that works. I just used that yesterday. Okay. Maybe that's why it's in my tool bag because it now works. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can get under this machine. I need like a GoPro or something attached to my head. I feel like I'm running one-handed here. It's like welcome to Crippled Diagnostics with Kyle. I'm trying to work on this one-handed. And then, as you can see, they did not make these machines for fat guys. You can sit up in here though. It's pretty nice. Okay. Oh, I forgot my light. Check this out. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's look at this thing. See what exactly I'm doing. What's funny is I found out. This transmission is a reman transmission, maybe two years old or so. Okay. So, I'd like to say it doesn't probably have serious issues. Hey, check this out. I have no idea if the rail wheels are up or down because, well, limit switch don't work when your little trip deal isn't bolted up there. Okay. Okay, this is a control valve. It's in the greatest place on earth. Back side of the transmission, below the bell housing on the engine, above the drive shaft, somewhere by the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, so this is where the C and D was for speeds uh, five through eight, which we don't have, this is four speed. I'm pretty sure if I remember that drawing right. So up there should be three and four, I think. No. I don't know. Are these labeled? Sometimes these are casted in here where you can tell what's what. I'm gonna say no on that one. And I actually cleaned this thing up a little bit, like <laughs> six cans of brake clean later. You can kind of sort of make stuff out. This thing's dirty. Okay. Oh, I see letters. You actually see where it says A. Probably says B on the other one. Unless Sesame Street lied to me. B is not after A. I don't know. It's one of those. Now uh, these are speeds. So that likely means, oh my God, how am I supposed to get to that? That's my one and two forward reverse, so lovely. Oh boy. Okay, so that's where I, <laughs> where I need to get to. Um, yeah. I guess I got some cleaning to do. Okay, so now I gotta clean this thing up. So I got my truck turned on. Uh, it's the Van Air twin screw. Um, my airline. And then every fuel technician's favorite cleaning fluid, brake clean. This is probably not the best way to do it, but it's a way to do it. I got that somewhat, somewhat cleaned up. I can actually kind of see what I'm doing. It's uh, it's like 25 degrees out here. 
kind of cold. And then when you get up underneath machinery, you got like this constant breeze that doesn't stop. And uh, it gets even colder working underneath here. Anybody like crawling in glass? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a douche. With a boner in the night. Great footage, y'all. Trust me, I can't see either. And I got dirt falling in my mouth. Okay, like 15 minutes later, I found out that I could sit like basically on the front side of this deal and look back. It's still not easy. Ow. Still not easy to look back in there, but I am probed into my number one clutch pack. solenoid because you can see there's the other one there there's that one that should be number one I hope 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 I'm stabbed in there making con uh, connection which I think I am but I also realized I wanted to get my leads poked up top I don't know if I can do that reasonably so I got 15 feet on these hopefully I can get all the way up and around to the other way so let me crawl my butt out of here and Minuto working on the Rosetta Stone lately things start to pay off but sometimes you never know when you gotta ask for a banyo Going in. I'm tired of listening to that. There's my horde of lights that don't work. My battery hooked up. <laughs> Almost tripped and died. There we go. Three points of contact. As you can see here, now well, you probably can't see, I can see it. This is a uh, uh, series in battery set so that means you got two 12 volts you're actually looking at a 24 volt system now unless this unit has some kind of like converter thing the solenoid might see uh 24 volt might see 12. i don't know I'm gonna find out together okay that's on tight That's on tight. Okay. Let's see this baby will start. Alright. Oh no. <laughs> I gotta get that off here. I don't know if you've seen, you guys have seen that meme where Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt off saying when you're trying to get all your layers off to go to the bathroom. Well, that's what it's like when you're trying to get your keys out of your pocket too. Got 27 layers. Just trying to stay freaking warm so you can work longer than 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, bam. Contact. Well, that started way easier than the other day. Let's bring my rail wheels up slightly. Yeah, rail wheels. I know you can't see it from this angle, but they are up. And I can't do anything yet until I can release the park brake. You can't do that unless, that was really hard to see, unless you have enough air, because this is an air brake, air actuated brake. You have to have enough air pressure to uh, hold the brake in. 
Okay, so I got the minimum, which on a lot of these rail cars and a lot of air brake actuate systems, about 60 psi ish is the minimum. Uh, oh, oh, stay running. Uh, a minute, this stupid thing. Come on. Sounds like an old jalopy. And then I forgot, I gotta be able to see my meter. Which I didn't bring up in viewing for myself. But I gotta be able to tell if I work or not. Stay running. Piece of shit. If I can get this thing to run freaking long enough. Watch it be gelled up. Oh my gosh, I'll be so upset. Oh, there we go, we're, we're in gear. So, take a look, our wheels are spinning. Okay, we are moving. And that's in two, which is what we knew worked. See if our meter reads anything. Half a volt, but we are not selected in that gear, so that might be fairly normal. Let's go back to one. Our wheel should be spinning faster to work. I've got six volt. It is moving. But creeping. So, went underneath, changed over to the other solenoid. So, the six volt is probably coming from the controller. That's probably right. Without actually having written documentation, I don't know. I have swapped solenoids from plug to plug. That way I can prove that the solenoid wasn't bad. And now, I put them back in their original location uh, as far as uh, swapping plug to plug. But now I swapped solenoids one to two and two to one. What that will do is what used to control my speeds one and three will now control two and four. And since I know two and four work, uh, if I lose two and four in this testing, uh, confuse myself. I know what I'm talking about, I swear. Maybe. Like I said, fixed-ish. Okay. Park break off. Neutral one. Let's go. No errors. We are in first. And look, we got spinning spin. And we never had first. So if I got a two. I have lost two. But I have gained three. Gun to have nothing, but if I go into one, move it. I got a two. Move it. All right, let's think about that. So I had, uh, I had one and three, everything the way it was supposed to be in its original location. Oh my God, that wind is cold. Close that window. Uh, so I had everything the way it was. I swapped solenoid to solenoid, however, kept the wiring in the same location. Um, so then I put them back where they were but then I swapped uh, position one for position two and I got my speeds back but lost the ones that I did have. So that we proved the functionality of the transmission. It functions. And that also proves that my wiring, if I swapped it location to location, 
So I, on the first test where I swapped solenoid for solenoid, I proved that the uh, solenoids work. And swapping location to location and my problem follows, that means that I have a problem in my wiring. So for whatever reason, even though I show that six volt, um, there's not enough load to uh, make that speed work. Uh, but I know my solenoid itself works because I swapped it location to location. I still had speeds one and three. So yeah, we're looking at a wiring or controller issue, however it puts out that signal. That's actually something I have to look at here real quick to see if that's, uh, if it's got some kind of electrical controller that puts that out, that I don't know. So I'm gonna do a little research.